Hello, I'm Dennis Neal, and this would be Diane Diamond. That would be me. And we've <laughs> got the Newsmax panel coming up, and today we've got the media director of FAIR, that would be Ira Melman, and also columnist for Breitbart.com, he is. And we also have uh, an American thinker, C. Edmund Wright. Thanks for being with us, gentlemen. Why don't we start with immigration? Who wants the jump ball? Ira, you want to take it? Well, I, you know, I think what we're experiencing right now is the natural result of policies put forth by this administration. They have created this crisis. They have sent a clear message to the world that if you can get to the United States border, we will let you in. If you don't go on to commit some sort of heinous crime once you're here, we will allow you to stay. And the inevitable result is that we're going to have millions of people over time taking us up on this offer. What we're seeing now is the front wave. Uh, people from Central America who are saying, you know, look, we have access. We, you know, it's a relatively short journey across Mexico. Uh, we can get there. And especially the, the <clears throat> government will allow children to remain. So we're going to send our kids here first. Yeah, it does look like it's a concerted effort if uh, 14,000 children or something have come in the past year and it's a vast increase. It does look like it's Perfect. on purpose. They found another loophole. But just to be fair here, Ira, Hasn't our immigration policy been screwed up for a couple of decades? Is this really an Obama problem? Isn't this a government problem? Well, it, it is both. It has been screwed up for decades, but the Obama administration has taken it to a new level. They have, no other administration in the past has actually affirmatively said, we are not going to enforce our immigration laws. Other administrations simply haven't done it by default. Uh, but here you have an administration that is saying, if you get to the United States illegally, so long as you don't go on to commit some kind of serious crime here in the United States, we are going to do nothing to remove you from the United States. And as a matter of fact, uh, we are going to work as hard as we can to get you amnesty. And Ira, don't you think, and by the way, Ira, it's great to talk to you. Ira Melman, my old longtime for, for friend. Edmund. We've got to get Edmund in there. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Let me just ask you real quick, Ira, um, uh, about the, the children. This is a whole brand new thing here. That wh What are we going to do with these 700 children that just crossed the border and, and they're in Nogales, Arizona without their parents? What do we do? Well, we're going to probably send them on their way to some, trust them to somebody here in the United States, you know, some people who will claim to be relatives. We don't know where those kids are going, and that's part of the tragedy. Uh, you've got people who are entrusting their kids to smugglers to get them here, and, and these smugglers are no humanitarians. You know, they don't okay. really care if their cargo gets here alive or dead. They just want to get paid. And then once they are here, okay. we are going to be turning them over to people uh, that may or may not be relatives, that may or may not have the best interests of these kids at heart. So, uh, you know, this administration is complicit in this, both in terms of the disastrous public policy and also in terms of what becomes of some of these kids. And we don't know what really what's going to happen to them. Yes, and uh, Ira, for those of you watching uh, on your screens, Ira is the world's single best ventriloquist. His lips are not moving. I think that is a photo. Let's go to C. Edmund Wright, who's a live face inside that box. And where do you, where do you come down on this, Edmund? Or well, C. Well, well, I mean, I was correct. It, the Obama administration has made it a lot worse with their policies. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're putting in place all the wrong kinds of incentives, which is just going to make things worse. Uh, but it has been going on 60 or 70 years of poor government, uh, a, a weak border, uh, giving welfare benefits, all kind of handouts to illegals. Um, and, uh, and, and, and not And don't forget the DREAM the Act. Remember the DREAM Act. Yeah. So, I, I mean, this, it, this is what happens when you have bad government policy. You have bad results. We've had bad policy for 60 or 70 years. For the last few days, the last few weeks and few months, it's been even worse. So what we have is a bad problem that is rapidly getting a lot worse. And let's not forget the political yeah. component here. These are probably 70 percent reliable Democrat voters. Uh, that is not an accident. Yeah, see, that's what I was wondering, Edmund, is 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 the real fight over the immigration policy here really about keeping our borders safe or is it that republicans don't want a whole lot of new future democratic voters streaming into the country well the two are not mutually exclusive but it's interesting that there's a fault line inside the republican party right now there's kind of the uh, deport them all now uh, group and then anyone else is is considered even among republicans as pro amnesty so uh, you, you know, and then you get into the reality of logistics of 12 million people, and that's a that's a valid point. Uh, but there's it's more than just two sides to, to this issue, even among Republicans. Yes. Okay. Ira, where do you come down on that? Yeah. 
Well, well, first of all, I, I don't think there's anybody who's seriously suggesting that we're going to deport all the people who are here illegally. Uh, you know, the choice isn't between no the two stark extremes, which is mass amnesty, which is capitulation, and mass deportation, which is really not feasible. Uh, what we need are policies in place that make it clear to people that they're not going to benefit by remaining here. They rely on the fact that these are rational people. Now, the Republicans seem to have bought into the idea, or at least the leadership seems to have bought into the idea, that if they just grant amnesty, they're going to win a lot of Hispanic voters. That isn't borne out by the facts. The last time we had an amnesty was back in 1986. It was passed by a Republican-led Senate, signed by President Ronald Reagan. And two years later, George H.W. Bush went out and ran against Michael Dukakis, arguably one of the weakest candidates the Democrats have ever fielded. And among Hispanic voters, uh, Dukakis cleaned Bush's clock. It, it was roughly the same breakdown as Obama-Romney. So there's no evidence whatever that supporting amnesty is going to win Hispanic votes for Republicans. What Republicans ought to be doing is, is telling Hispanics, look, if we limit the influx of immigrants, we are going to increase the value of your labor. The law of supply and demand will drive up the price of labor. And I think that's what most Hispanics and most voters generally would like to see happen in this country. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, right. C. Edmund Wright, let, let, me ask, yeah. let me ask you, C. Edmund, do we call you C or do we call you Edmund? Which one? Edmund's good. Edmund's good. Okay, Edmund. Um, do you see states, especially the border states I mentioned, California, Arizona, Texas, Louisiana, do you see them going ahead and trying to tackle this problem on their own, given what the administration did in Arizona to their state law? Oh, I think so. And, and then you have to wonder if Eric Holder and the Department of Justice will intervene and try and stop them. Uh, you know, that they have tried to stop Arizona, Jan Brewer, from doing some things out there. Uh, I, I, if I might, I would like to address one point that Ira brought up. Actually, there are a lot of people very seriously on talk radio and message boards who do believe that some sort of mass deportation is possible. I would agree with you. That's, that's logistically not going to happen. Uh, but th there is that faction inside the conservative movement. It, it's out there. Yes. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Really good job so far, Ira Melman and uh, C. Edmund Wright. We will be right back. We're going to take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to have part two of the Malsberg panel. Up next, Dennis Neal here with the fabulous Diane Diamond. Thank you so much. It's that camera, but it'll be that camera in a minute. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> 